This video is picking up right where the previous video left off. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about switches and menus. All the code in this video works in Octave exactly as shown here in MATLAB. So switches are essentially a handy way to avoid a lengthy sequence of ifs and else ifs. But some limitations apply. Now, if you're one of my students, I'm going to skim this because I want you to focus on getting the basic understanding of ifs and else ifs. But for general interest people or just people trying to learn all the different aspects of MATLAB, let's jump into switches. So here's what a basic switch looks like. I've got the keyword switch followed by a variable name. In this case, variable is city. I'm using the input function to get some input from the user. They're going to type in a city name, and then my code is going to respond based on which city they typed in. The idea here is that there's some sort of parental airlines for a student going on spring break. They type Boston. Okay, here's how much it costs to fly to Boston if you're flying very cheaply and from where I live. And here's how much it would cost to fly to Denver. I live much closer to Denver, so that costs less. How about Honolulu? Parents say no, stay home and study. And otherwise, that's it. That's, that's the only locations that parental airlines apparently flies to. And what's going to happen is the value of city is going to be compared to Boston. And if it matches, this will be displayed and everything else gets skipped. If the value of city does not match Boston, then this will be skipped and we'll check does it match Denver. All right, if it matches, then this will be displayed and we skip everything else. Otherwise, we'll check if it matches Honolulu. Otherwise, this is kind of like else. We're going to display not on file. Now, let me uh, make my screen more balanced here and run this code. All right, enter the name of the city, Denver, and we get 150. Run this over here, enter the name of the city, Boston, 345. Honolulu, stay home and study. And anything else, not on file. One thing I will note that is a slight difference with Octave, but kind of tripped me up a little bit, is the input function right here. When you run input in MATLAB, the focus is automatically transferred from the editor window over to the command window. So I run this code, and without clicking anything else, the rest of my typing is going to be over on the right side. That is not how Octave works. Octave keeps the focus in this window over here, and you have to click over to the command window in order to then enter your input over there. It's a very minor difference, but I just thought I'd mention that since I recently ran into it. Okay, this code right here is equivalent to this code down here. Yikes. This is certainly a lot more to write and probably harder to read. Now, the main difference is that the switch is taking care of the fact that we can't easily compare strings of different lengths. With these if statements and else if statements, the very first thing I have to do is check to make sure the length of the city that was typed in matches the length of the city that we're trying to match to. And then we'll check to see if they are literally the same string. And I do that on each of these. Now the switch is taking care of that for me. And so if you look over here, let's compare Boston to Denver. What we actually get is a logical array because this is a vector of six symbols. And this is a vector of six symbols and each of them is going to be compared. Is D the same as B? No, false. How about E and O? No, false. None of the letters are the same. Now, if there was a fantasy made up city of Boster, then the last two would actually be true. Those would be matches because ER does match ER. But that's not really our problem. Our problem is with the lengths. If we try to compare Denver to Honolulu, well, we just get an error because that's like trying to compare a vector of six values to a vector of uh, eight values. In fact, that's literally the problem. The vectors are different lengths. So we have to add in a lot of uh, checks to make that work. But the code is otherwise equivalent. I'm getting little warnings here because it wants me to use the double ampersand instead of the single ampersand, and that is more correct. But for simplicity, I tell my students that they can just use the single ampersand. Continuing on down, menus, except menus are deprecated. That means we're not actually supposed to use menus in MATLAB anymore, but I'll show you the code and the code still does work. Older versions of MATLAB would need to use menus, but there's this thing called list DLG. Honestly, don't know what the DLG stands for that stands in place of menus. Okay, so here's the new way of doing things. I'll run it first and then I'll explain it. It pops up this little menu right here. And the options are Boston, Denver, Honolulu, and I added in Miami. Now, I haven't done anything with the results, so when I click one of these options and click OK, nothing happens. I can also just double click, and, and nothing happens right now. 
Now, this menu just did pop up right here, but that's because uh, I have further code down here that creates a menu. So again, I don't know, I'll click on Honolulu. Great, it says stay home and study. Okay, so the list DLG right here, first of all, I create a variable. I set it equal to a cell array of strings, so in curly brackets there. I also have this variable did select because there's a cancel option on that menu. And if you click cancel, well, then you didn't select anything. So while nothing has been selected, make the menu appear and then make it appear again if the user has not selected anything. In fact, let me run this again and show you how that would work. All right, so if I click cancel, it actually just pops up again. That's because of this while loop right here. You don't normally have to do that, but that's what's happening. So click cancel, did select stays false. While not false, display out the menu again. All right, I'm just gonna press okay for Boston. All right, so we have two variables here. We have city and did select. City is gonna be a numeric value. In this case, one through four, because there are four options. Number one will correspond to Boston, two with Denver, and so on. Did select will be a zero or a one, zero indicating false, one indicating true. And we set it equal to list DLG parentheses, the prompt string followed by, so this is like a keyword. We wanna always have prompt string in quotes here. And then in curly brackets, what is the text that we want to display to the user? We indicate that we want single selection modes. They can only select one option as opposed to more than one. And then we say uh, our list string, the options that are going to appear. Now, the old way of doing things is actually, I think, easier to read. So I'm not quite sure why they changed it, but this is not as recommended as my understanding. So we have a variable, in this case, city. Again, it's going to correspond to Boston, Denver, or whatever in order numerically, one, two, three, four, equal to the menu function, the text that we want to display on the menu, followed by our different options separated by commas, each in their own pair of single quotes. Now, when I use a switch on this, I'm not actually comparing to Boston. That's just a comment. I don't even need that. I don't need Denver right here. I'm comparing the city variable to the number one, or the number two, or the number three, or the number four. I just added in the comments to sort of indicate and remind the person reading my code, what do these values correspond to? And so that's why you saw a result when I did click uh, whatever I clicked, I think Honolulu, when I had the menu pop up. So we're using menus in conjunction with switches, which is often, but not necessarily the case. One of the limitations of switches is that we're not gonna be doing greater than, less than, whatever comparisons. It's gotta be an equality match. Is the city exactly equivalent to one or two or three or whatever? Same before, was it equivalent to the string Boston or the string Denver? That is a limitation, but there's also conveniences to be gained from switches. Continuing on down. Now here's that same alternative with the uh, list DLG also combined with the switch itself with a little bit of error checking uh, for security right there. So let's run it, pops up the menu. Oh yeah, I didn't need to change the screen width because it's a menu here. Click on Denver, I don't know, okay. 150 to Denver, great. So it's the exact same list DLG code as before. Two variables uh, are results from list DLG. The city is numeric. Did select is, is zero or one, true or false. Now, if anything was selected, we'll then run our switch and see what we matched with. Otherwise, there's no else, D don't do anything, just skip it, All right? So the if is just protecting the switch because the city uh, won't have a proper value. In fact, let me run this again and just click cancel. Well, what's the value of city? Well, if I display city over here, it's actually just an empty array. So we can't switch on an empty array. We don't have that as an option. So we don't wanna try and run the switch if the user clicked cancel. All right, next up is just a brief example of the single select mode versus the uh, multiple select, which is actually the default. So I'll run this section right here, control enter. Here is our menu. Uh, we have all these different options. You can't see it, but I'm gonna hold the control key on my keyboard and then click other options and it has no effect. Uh, I'm just changing which option I have selected. Blue is good, click okay. All right, and I get two results. I get the index of the value I selected. Blue was the third option. And then I get a true false value of whether or not I clicked cancel or I actually accepted a color. And I did in fact click a color, so it's true. Running the next section right here, and the only difference is I just deleted this selection mode single from the list of inputs, run that section. And now when I hold control and click, I can select more than one option. 
I even have this select all button down here. Now I don't want to select everything, so let me just deselect some stuff and click OK. And my results, I actually get three different indexes. Index is now a vector rather than a scalar value. And it has all of the options that I selected, the second, fourth, and sixth. And it is true that I did in fact select something rather than clicking cancel. All right, some more examples here. Not too different from what we saw before, but we'll run it anyway. Enter your year in high school as either freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. And then we'll switch on that to see what was typed in, and it'll determine which day of the week you have your finals on. So we run it, and I'll type in junior, because that's easy to type out, and hit enter. Great, your finals are on Wednesday. And you can experiment with the code and get all the other options. Reminder that switches don't have an else, they have an otherwise. Continuing on down, here's the exact same thing, but with the list DLG. So you can do a little comparison here. Pops up, I'll click sophomore this time, OK. And it says the finals are on Tuesday. I do want to check and make sure that year is not an empty array. We can use this function, built-in function, if is empty year, to make sure that year uh, has a value. And we'll set it equal to zero if it doesn't currently. If it's an empty matrix, we'll give it this value right here. Oh, I should also mention that you can use tilde as sort of a I don't care symbol for functions that return more than one result. You can put it in there as just like a placeholder for like, okay, I know you're going to return two results, but I just want to ignore the second one. And then here's our switch that responds. Uh, same as before, except we're matching on one, two, three, four, rather than the text input. And that's all for this video. In the next video, I'm going to wrap up some content with if and else and else if. I'm going to look at nested if statements and also the use of if in functions. It really doesn't add anything that we haven't seen before, but for newer programmers, it could be helpful.